I am very happy to welcome you all to today's lecture, Making Things and Doing Science. I am sure many of you already know about the activities of the planetarium, but at the cost of repetition, to inform our guest, I will very quickly mention about the activities. We organize several activities throughout the year for popularization of science and non-formal science education. And for popularization of science, we have sky theatre shows, exhibitions, then sky, monthly sky gazing program, monthly science movies, and we also organize for public to view astronomical events as and when they happen. In fact, last month there was a lunar eclipse in the middle of the night, and we ended up attracting about 3,000 to 4,000 people, even though the sky was overcast and we had no hopes of seeing. And you know, we had to disappoint, but people have uh, so much uh, this one in us that they keep coming. And one of our activity, very important activity, is public lectures. Thanks to for the association with ICTS, it is gaining strength with every passing month. And we are having this monthly lecture series, Copy with Curiosity. And this month, we are having a very special person, Padma Shri Arvind Gupta, to tell us how to do science, activity-based things. I extend a very warm welcome to you, sir. I extend a hearty welcome to all the members present here. I request Professor Rajesh Gopakumar to speak few words about ICTS. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Pramod. Uh, so uh, this is a special occasion, as uh, uh, Dr. Pramod said. Uh, we usually get a full house at Copy with Curiosity, but this is like one and a half full houses. So uh, uh, this is, uh, clearly speaks uh, to th the speakers, uh, the, the great draw that uh, Sri Arvind Gupta has amongst so many of you. And I hope you will take back some of that excitement of uh, doing science by making things from every day. Uh, I, I must say I'm a great fan of his. I have many of his books and I have tried to do it with my son as well, who unfortunately, I, I, being unwell, I couldn't bring him with me today. Uh, but I must just share with you that my first memory of him is when I was an undergraduate student, uh, probably like many of you. Uh, I was at IIT Kanpur and he had come and given a, a spellbinding talk. Uh, I still have a vivid memory uh, of uh, him moving around uh, with a big uh, wire film and creating a giant soap bubble. Uh, behind him uh, uh, in the uh, lecture hall. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I think he, uh, I mean, uh, uh, he mentioned then that it was adding glycerine to the soap water that makes it, uh, uh, makes it very strong and how you can make uh, big bubbles, which, and that is something I have used uh, uh, since then uh, uh, in making soap bubbles for, uh, for kids, uh, including my own. So anyhow, it's a particular pleasure to have him, and I'm sure I, I, I shouldn't keep you uh, with my ramblings uh, from his talk. But I'll just very quickly tell you about ICTS, if you have not been for any of our events before. Uh, we are a new center, uh, 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 science center in Bangalore. We are located in Hesarghatta, uh, northwest uh, corner of Bangalore, a little bit outside town. If you get a chance to come for one of our public lectures, I think you will be uh, you'll be very pleasantly surprised at the change of scenery from uh, the city. It's in um, uh, in rural setting, so uh, uh, so it's a, it would be a nice change. And we have a lot of public lectures. In fact. Just about 10 days ago, we had another fascinating lecture by a, a visitor from the United States who also showed a few, uh, had a few interesting demos in his uh, uh, talk. Uh, again, very uh, non-trivial phenomena uh, that he illustrated with uh, uh, demonstrations. If you weren't there for the talk, you can watch that talk as well as all our previous talks on our YouTube channel called ICTS Talks. 
all the copy with curiosity uh, uh, lectures are put up there. Uh, all the previous public lectures and even many of our, all our technical lectures. In fact, the website is a huge resource uh, and I would urge you all with whatever your level of interest uh, in sciences, you will find uh, some fascinating talks there and on um, whatever your interest be in biology, physics, chemistry, mathematics. Uh, um, so uh, ICTS does uh, outreach, of course, very vigorously, but we also uh, have our own researchers in a variety of areas in theoretical physics, mathematics, uh, uh, quantitative biology, and so on. Uh, we organize programs in which we bring the world's best scientists for many of the research themes uh, on which we run programs, and that's very closely integrated with Copy with Curiosity. So. A lot of our visitors uh, have spoken in this series, and uh, that uh, so we try to bring the best in the world and in India to uh, to Bangalore through these events. So enjoy it, and please come for more of our events. And I'm, uh, as usual, grateful to the Planetarium for partnering with us for the last one and a half years. It has been a very uh, nice and productive partnership, and I hope this will continue. Uh, thank you very much. So let me also add my welcome uh, to all the people here, but also welcome the people who are sitting upstairs in the spillover room, and that's also full with uh, close to 150 people. So. Yeah, we'll try our best. We'll try our best. Khandita, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, a brief introduction to our speaker. Arvind Gupta did a BTEC from IIT Kanpur in uh, 1975. He joined uh, Telco, but left the job uh, to follow his passion, which is science teaching and science education. He has written more than 30 books, and many of his books have been translated to many Indian languages. Uh, so he has worked at the Children's Science Center in Ayuka for about 11 years, and the center produced about 9,000 short movies, two-minute videos on simple experiments on science and science toys. Uh, the, v v the videos have been watched by millions of people, 78 million people or something over the world. And recently, for all his efforts, the government of India awarded him with the uh, Padma Shri uh, earlier in this year. So we are very, very happy. Uh, <laughs> so in fact, his, his motto of turning trash into toys is something that is really relevant to Indian science today. So I really extend a very warm welcome to you, sir. So before he takes over, let me request uh, Mr. Shiv Shankar Shatri to hand over a memento to him. Thank you. So over to Arvind. Thank you. This has been a very, very generous welcome for me. Thank you very much for coming in such large numbers. Uh, I've been a toy maker. I've been a tinkerer all my life. Uh, my parents never went to school. Uh, there were very few toys at home. So we would collect cigarette boxes, matchboxes, and clever people make their own toys. Rich people go and buy them from malls or online, but clever people make their own toys. And I'm going to show you many, many toys which children can make themselves. There is a book on my website called as The Joy of Making Indian Toys, written by Sudarshan Khanna. Sudarshan was at the NID for 35 years. And very early in his career, he was teaching about materials, you know, composite materials, their properties. And it, it dawned on him that Indian toys envisage the best. So he has documented 100 toys, a book which is published by the National Book Trust. It's on my website in several languages. Now, this is a broomstick. The poorest Indian house would have a broom, coconut broomstick. Yes. So you take a large broomstick and a short broomstick, and you tie them together. And this one is a slight angle. It's not exactly perpendicular, but slightly like the seam of four railway arms, slightly bent down. And this probably came down to India, 7,000 kilometers of coastline, probably from Kerala or from Tamil Nadu. And children would actually poke a baby coconut into this. But where I live in Pune, there are no coconut trees. So this is a piece of rubber slipper. It's a <laughs> substitute, some weight over here. And if I just perch with my index finger, and this is the big side. If, if I spin it towards a big side, this is what you see. Centrifugal force, centripetal force are very big words for children. These are very abstract notions. But when children play with toys like this, it brings them slightly closer to the concept. They can understand this. Uh, 
Now, no, no, many good progressive steps have been taken to schools. In Pune, in Maharashtra, children have to, something called as a project method. The children have to make projects in science. Uh, this was made by a four, class fourth boy six years back, which won an award. You can see structurally they are exactly the same toys. They look quite similar, but this is slightly different. What can you imagine? What did this boy made? Uh, not a chopper, it, it, it spins, of course, it spins like the earlier toy, but what did he envisage? What was the toy which he made? Satellite, that's excellent. This is a, it was a satellite for him. Uh, you know, satellites got these two solar arms because you can't be carrying batteries up space because they're very expensive, very heavy to take. So you generate your own power, the two solar panels, and what the sa satellite spins around <laughs> the Earth, so it's a satellite. So for at the child's level, it's a great toy. It costs no money at all. The, the poorest child can enjoy this. Now this is something which, um, uh, this is uh, ordinary straws. Straws are being banned. In Maharashtra, straws are being banned. And I think rightly so, because the next is the balloons. We use a hell of a lot of them, we'll have to search for substitutes. But this is an ordinary straw, and uh, we just cut a kind of a simple point over here. It's like a, it's like a baby crocodile's mouth. And uh, it can open and close. If I, this is like a reed, R-E-D, reed, a reed which vibrates, I'm going to put this in my mouth and blow my lungs out. <coughs> it makes quite a racket. If you want to disturb a class, best way to do it. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you can't see how the sound is made because the part which is actually vibrating was hidden by mouth. I'm going to keep this outside. Instead of blowing out air, I'm going to suck in air. Just watch at this point. It's opening and closing at a very fast rate. It's vibrating. Now, children, can, you don't need to mug this up. Children can experience the joy. They can hear it. And there's a great deal of physics behind this. And they can... But the first steps in science should be extremely joyous steps. The, every child should be hooked to science. He must say that science is the most interesting subject on Earth. And what we can do is, uh, over here, I've just made two small holes. And we are inching towards a flute of sorts. And... Um, <coughs> And, and with this, of course, I keep blowing. I'll keep blowing at it, keep making the noise, and simultaneously, I'll be chopping it, making it short and short, and something amazing happens. You may forget all the other experiments, but this, I'm, I can tell you that you're not going to forget it very easily. Uh, oh, it'll take a good one. Very good. Well, before I go down to other things, I just want to show you these. Uh, these are some matchstick models, which uh, uh, I, this is 19, this is 40 years old. I, I was a very young engineer at that time, 24 years old when I did them. But uh, I'd gone and this, all this water you see has a very strong connect with the TIFR. Now, what's your age? Uh, I'm 65. I'm going to be 65 this December. Uh, I was, this is in 78, and uh, in 72, I heard a person who had come from the TIFR, Dr. Anil Satgopal. He had done a PhD from Caltech, was a molecular biologist, and he had left his job in the TIFR and started the Hushangabad Science Program. The whole purpose was to make science fun for village children. In villages, there were no science labs. All science was learned by road children, mug up definitions, formulae, come exams, and they spit it out. And they said, this is a horrendous way of learning science. So he had set up, so I spent a year there in 78. I took a leave from my job and I spent, and that was a transformational year for me. 
This is a small village in Madhya Pradesh, in, in Hushangabad district, called Ispalia Piparia. Just a weekly hut, a weekly bazaar, where people spread all their wares on the ground, on mats, and they sell them. And I, so I bought one specimen of each. I said, the challenge lies in trying to make something which is locally available. And I was getting my bike inflated, as I saw the cycle valve tube. This is, you can buy a 100 gram packet of the cycle valve tube for about 25, 30 rupees, which is 40 feet of this. If you take a bit of the cycle valve tube, two mastics go in very snugly, and they meet head on like this. So you make a very nice, a joint of two. It's like a flexible coupling. You can show this in acute angle, a right angle, obtuse angle, straight angle. Well, right from zero to three degrees. It's like a universal coupling. You can transmit drive at any angle. If you had three of them together, you could loop them together and make a triangle. It's a very special kind of a triangle, say, collateral triangle, because all these matchsticks are mass produced in a factory. They're the same length. It says all angles are automatically 60 degrees. So you shouldn't get a feel as to what 60 degrees is. If you have four of them, you make a square, you make a pentagon, you make a hexagon, you make all these kinds of polygons, and which have some very interesting properties. If you look at the hexagon, for instance, these are all flexible joints, they transmit moments. If you just pull this out, this becomes a rectangle. If you give it a push, it transforms into a parallelogram. But this is like an amoeba, which is constantly changing its outer profile. It's very, very, very fragile, it's very flexible. If you inspect the pentagon, pull this out, this becomes a boat shaped with a trapezium. Push it in, this becomes a house shape. This becomes an isosceles triangle, two sides equal. Again, very, very shaky. You inspect the square, the square looks very square and prim. All right angles, give it a push, it becomes a rhombus. Barfi ban jata, patang ban jata, bahati la chila. But then you give a child a triangle, and no matter what she does, you can't do a thing to a triangle. A triangle remains a triangle. This is the bedrock of all civil and mechanical energy. If you go to a village house, you will find that the roof is... You never make a roof like this, because you put tiles on top, what would happen? The roof would collapse. If you see these steel bridges made with girders and angle iron, and if you notice carefully, you find each and every member is divided into triangles. If you have a square bridge, what would happen? When the train comes, the bridge would start doing a dance. It's very, very unstable. Hence, if you see any of these microwave towers, high-lift transmission towers, each one of them is divided into triangles. So the children can actually feel the concept in their hands. This is and if you have a joint or two like this, you can make a hole, you poke a needle crosswise and push a third mastic inside. Now we have a T-joint, no glue. It's a T-joint, three legs, and if we were to make holes in the three vertices of this triangle, I could insert all the three legs in the three corners, and what I would make would be extremely nice tetrahedron. Here's a three-dimensional figure composed entirely of tetrahedrons. Tetra means a triangle. Hedrons means four. Four. Tetra means four. And this is, every side is a triangle. It's very, very steep. The strongest structure found in nature. Hey, you see. Yes, this is the tetrahed, this is, you can see this is the molecular structure of methane, CH4. Put four marbles, in between is a little carbon atom, four marbles in the four corners of the tetrahedra. School going kids could make. And once you make, you can make a joint of four, you can make a joint of six like this, and it offers enormous flexibility in latitude to design in space. If you, if you make a cube, for instance, you can put a pyramid on top, and this becomes a kind of a house shaped. If you have a prism, you can put a tetrahedron on top, and this becomes a kind of a temple, triangular temple. You can make an octahedron, um, this icosahedron, a joint of six, all the platonic solids. Now, we are talking of not any fancy material. This is 40 years back. We are not talking about a fancy thing. And if there was one mechanical contraption which had reached millions of villages, which was the cycle. So the cycle tube was... Uh, available very locally in a small kasba on a town you can buy cycle valve tube. So this was kind of a homespun mechano which I had done and this gave me enormous joy. I think this is worth doing, I thought. Well, we make lots of other toys. One which we had to struggle for many years um, is the electric motor. And this, what you're seeing, is a very, very evolved version of the electric motor, but it has gone through numerous previous stages, which was much cruder, much more difficult. 
But this is the simplest motor on earth. The most expensive is this battery. Battery costs about 20 rupees. It's a new battery because for any output you need an input. If the if this coil starts to spin without this, uh, with a drain battery, it would be black magic. And this is science. <laughs> so this is a new battery. These are two safety pins, long ones, and this is what is this black thing? It's an old cycle tube. I, I can bet you in any stationery shop in the metropolis of Bangalore, you can't buy broad rubber bands. Very difficult to buy. But India has given the word jugar to the world that if you <laughs> if you don't have something in hand, use your head, right? <laughs> Find for a look for a substitute. And so the cycle tube is a great substitute regularly. So both these safety pins are snug to the plus and the minus of the battery, 1.5 volts across. Both these safety pins, if you were to attach a small torch bulb, is going to glow, not burn very brightly. For that, you require three volts. But and this is a very this is 50 paisa each. The two magnet. This is the ring magnet. And so this is this is a permanent magnet. Whenever current flows through a coil, it becomes an electromagnet. And this is a coil. Ten minutes from start to end to make this. I'm going to just give it. Now this is the simplest motor on earth. It's unfortunate. This we did in 1990s. I documented this in 1990. Made a film with the NCRT. Put this into a book. But millions of kids still make a motor in school. No, this is this is. It's been a long history. There's a, you know, it's, it's, science is the history of science. There is a. No, it's, it's a his, science is the history of science. I stand on the shoulders of so many many people. I put my small contribution to it. Make it simpler. Make it easier. But this is it. Every child can enjoy the electric motor. Ten minutes. If you have, if you have a battery, five rupees to make the motor. So it's not a rich man's game. In a middle-class house, a dozen places, the fan is a motor, the cooler has a motor, the mixer has a motor, the washing machine has a motor, the air conditioner has a motor. Motors, a dozen motors at home. It's a motor which drives a pump, which pumps water to the overhead tank. But rare is the child who ever makes a motor. And if if you, when I made it in 1990, trust me, I'm just recounting my personal story. For a month, I would get up at night at two o'clock, and run it for half an hour. Is it still working? <laughs> and then go off to sleep. So this is the kind of thrill and joy of making things with your own hands, and then a lot of lot of the laws of Faraday's laws of induction they fall into place. Uh, well, this is the motor, and very close to it is a kind of a generator. This came much later because these magnets, those are very very simple ferrite magnets, but uh, these are very strong magnets. These are called as the neodymium magnets. There is a periodic table. There is an element called neodymium. And they all come from China. China has the largest reserves of rare earths, and they're still put on it. Now, what we have done is, there are two of them. It's very difficult to separate them because they're sticking to each other. <laughs> you really require someone very, very strong to slide them. You can't take them apart like that. But this is it. So you take a old syringe. We have nothing to do with the needle. Take thin insulated copper wire used for motor rewinding. This may be 35 gauge, 34 gauge. How many turns? 1,000 turns. The children take it half an hour. Wind it like this, half an hour. In the start and the end, scrape the insulation and attach it to LED. That's it. I'm putting these magnets inside. Now these magnets can move in this barrel, which means this moving magnetic field and a very strong moving magnetic field inside a coil. And if I just shake it, what do you see? This is truly empowering. You know, imagine uh, I come from a small town in UP, uh, a girl in a village in UP with her 10, 12 hour power cuts. If a seventh, eighth class girl makes a model like this, today I'm going to, I'm lighting a LED, tomorrow I'll light up my village. It's truly empowering for a child, right? That's it. And very, very simple to make. There's nothing very complicated. Someone recently, uh, now there is, uh, this is a new generation. Same principle. You can see the coil is over here, the coil is over here, the LED is over here, and this is a fidget spinner, which every child, every young boy and girl is playing with these days. Very, it's got a ball bearing inside, <laughs> very frictionless. And look, if I just spin this, you can see there are three magnets. You can see on the 
uh, on the this uh, triangular bits. A every every um, blade, we have just put a one one stuck one very strong magnet, and that's it. Now, if you spin it, that's it. Very nice. A variation of the same thing, but it's a moving magnetic field inside the coil. That's it. Something which won us some little glory is this. Uh, you can see that motor. Now, this is these, this magnet, and this is a levitating pencil. Now, there are six magnets used in this toy. You can see four on this piece of rubber, two on this pen. The front ones attract, which means they must be opposite poles. One is north, one is south. I need not know which is north, which is south, but they're opposite poles. So what you do is you stick something like this. If it sticks like this, it must be opposite. So in this orientation, I put it here, I put it here. So they are opposite poles. On the, on the back side, they're same poles. They're both north or both south and they're pushing each other. So the rear poles are repelling the back of the pencil. The front ones are pulling it. So if I just put my finger over here and a little bit of this, I can just balance it. This pencil is actually hanging in the air. There is a lot of friction between my finger and the pen point. Here is a piece of old CD, CD, DVD. It's like glass, extremely smooth, very easy to cut with the home scissors. You can put this over here and it's a levitating pencil. It spins, it levitates, it writes. Uh, uh, Ayuka, I worked for 11 years. Ayuka was set up by Professor Jain Nadlikar, India's most celebrated astrophysicist. We just celebrated his 80th birthday. It was his dream that in Ayuka, we give a PhD in astronomy and astrophysics. We must have a children's science center. We must catch them young, imbue them with the love of science. And that's how we're going to get good scientists one day. It's enlightened self-interest. We must have many, many more popular lectures like this you know, for ordinary people. And this is 100,000, one lakh pencils the children of my city, Pune, have made. You know, if you're talking about maglev frames, if you go to Beijing, for instance, Beijing is 80 kilometers from the main city, you land in the airport, you take a maglev train, in 10 minutes you are in the city, 70 kilometers. The zip, because they're levitating, very frictionless, a smooth ride, and in 10 minutes you've done 70 kilometers in the city. Uh, this is futuristic technology, shouldn't get a good glimpse. And there was a girl in Ayuka, her name was Hamsa Padmanabhan, one of the other brightest physicists in Ayuka was Professor T. Padnaban, and his heart is into popular science. He used to write a column for something, a magazine called the Science Age, the story of physics. We collated it together into a small book. It's a cartoon comic book on physics, the story of physics, and got this into eight Indian languages. One daughter, both, both, both husband and wife, physicists from PIFR, the one daughter, Hamsa Padnaban. Hamsa was in high school, and uh, was fascinated by this toy. She wrote a mathematical paper on this when she was in high school. Second Intel International Award. She was lifted from India to Seattle. Second award. You can Google Hamsa Padnaban. $2,000 Intel gave. The American Association for Physics Teachers were so zapped by what this girl has done, they gave another $2,500. Seven years down the line, a minor planet was named after Hamsa because she explained this. Now, this is the potential of every girl in this country. You know, people say girls, girls take up soft subjects like arts and literature and commerce. I think they, mu they must write poetry, they must do many things, but girls must learn science too, and they're very good at it. Who says that girls are? We have never invested in our girls. Hamsa, uh, she could have just walked Kishore, every award in the book, Kishore Vaigyanik Puruskar, National Science Talent. She said, no IIT for me, no IIT. No idea. She went to the Ferguson College, did her MSc from the Pune University. No one had ever in the history of the Pune University got so much marks as Hamsa got. She went to Cambridge, came back. Not good for me. She went to MIT, not good for me. Uh, she's now working with Sun. But this is the, you can, you can read her paper, you can see the lev levitating pencil, and you can see Hamsa's paper right over there, right just underneath this. You can see this. I'm talking about this, there is an enormous potential. This is, uh, 
in the pune university pune university was a british governor's summer residence for only 11 acres a very beautiful campus very very few central universities of such a isc has a similar kind of but uh, someone got good sense to make it into university there is only one school in our campus it's a vidya peet shala it's like a municipal school 2500 children run by the karve shikshan sansa so we said we must run a science club in this school no reason for that it's a neighborhood school eight years we ran a club this is the story of a girl her name is uh, durga jetty yeah. uh, durga lived in a jhopla patti a slum mother was a housemaid durga has to clean utensils in four houses before she came to school but this is what durga made for her science project and which is today is famous as durga's turbine the world over what did this girl do took a small bottle cut off the base <laughs> you can see this this is the lid there is a hole in the lid uh, these are two safety pins which you tape over here so they are like two mounts with two little holes over here a, a needle and a turbine essentially this now if i were to dunk this in a glass of water what what would you expect what will enter the bottle it would eject some air and the air would dry the turbine this is durga turbine <laughs> but this is a poor, very poor girl from a very very poor household durga um, um, got into the in high school she got the school's second highest marks some 94% in high school very high by her school standards the times of india put durga's photograph put her toy over there which we documented and appeal to people generous people help this girl she is a very deserving person you know there is enormous generosity in society 350 checks poured in 7 lakh rupees we collected which is put in a fixed deposit so that from the best engineering college in pune durga is complete engineer again and i the potential of every girl given good mentorship given good projects as good as as bad as anyone else one need not be chauvinistic but give them a chance there's some very amazing paper this is something which was uh, it was designed by a mathematician in harvard in 1928 arthur stone and there was a person uh, who had documented a maths puzzle for the scientific american martin gardner for 25 years he has eight all those articles for college into eight books maths puzzles more math puzzles mathematical garden mathematical circus and so there's a whole chapter it's called as a flex you can see here's a piece of paper you can keep rotating what picture how many pictures you see butterflies frogs snakes eagles butterflies frogs that you could rotate paper like this without the paper tearing is something absolutely admirable it's awesome and if you have four pictures you could weave a story in them and but in butterflies are insects insects are eaten by the frogs frogs are eaten by the snakes snakes are eaten by the eagles like a little food chain all children read about this but it's so much more fun to read it like this and science is full of cycles and sequences and stories and it's fun to make them into a model like this and this is like the life cycle of a butterfly you can see two butterflies mating laying eggs and from the from the egg emerges the caterpillar often the caterpillar is so hungry that the first thing it does to eat the egg shell itself and then it nibbles on the tender leaves fattens and molds fattens and molds at a particular stage transforms into a pupa three different stages of the pupa and from the pupa finally emerges the monarch butterfly which once again mates and lays eggs the life cycle life cycle of the frog life cycle of the seasons so many concepts in in science very nice and if you just had a yeah if you just had a a4 size paper like this uh, a pencil and a scale Yes. Thanks a lot. So all you just need is a A4 paper like this, printed on one side, plain on the other, a scale and a pencil. No glue, no scissors. In three minutes, you can fold this. No glue. Three minutes.
this absolutely is one of those dynamic mathematical models. And the, the people who are best at using it is the ad world. First I saw this model, it was in Australia. There's some company manufacturing limousines and cars and AC cars, so every time you, you flexed it, you saw a new limousine, a new car, and this is how the ad people are very good at gimmicks like this because they want to sell things. But the world of education is much, much backward, I can tell you. But, <laughs> but we could use it every municipal school, a piece of paper, a scale and a pencil, and your ten little fingers, and you make a world-class model. This is not just limited to the study of science. If you were to talk about history, right? Talk about the Mughal period. Who was the first Mughal emperor? Draw the picture, write the name, draw the date, and then who was the one who extended him in the throne? Who was the next one? Who was the next one? Well, history can become much more interesting. History need not be learned the same way. You could repeat this same with the Maratha period. So a creative teacher could use it at hundreds of places like this. This is a big, if you take a small piece of paper, you make a small flexigon. And anyway, if you see your grandmother's birthday, draw this, say, draw some flowers, say happy birthday grandma, and give it to your grandma. You can't buy this online, you can't buy it in, on Flipkart, <laughs> but your grandma would be twiddling her thumbs all the time, right? <laughs> it's such a unique toy this is. Uh, not too many dynamic uh, paper models, but uh, this is a 14-page unending book. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. This is the last, and you start again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So it's just two squares of paper like this, a bit of blue. This is why it's a bit of blue. Three minutes to make this. Every child has a favorite story which they can, which they know backwards. <laughs> forward and they know it inside out, but they like to hear it again and again because it's a favorite. So they can take a story, divides into 14 steps, and every child can make pictures of it. So every child takes back a illustrated picture book, dynamic, which can rotate. A very, very wonderful project for children to do. Well, straws, um, the other thing, very nice thing which you can do is to make some kinds of pumps with them. We make uh, 31 pumps on my website. Largest number of pumps anyone makes in the world, right? 31 different, I'm going to show you three, four over here. Now, uh, this is made with a very simple straw. Uh, you take a broomstick, you can take a thick broomstick, coconut broomstick, poke it in the center of the straw. Take about two finger widths, make a half cut here. To the right, another half cut to the left. So both these arms can swivel, they can move. And if you bend them and make a triangle like this, very easy to make. And so that the triangle remains in place, you tie some scotch tape like a belt, and you would get this. It's a two minute toy. And if you were to take this, if you put this in a glass of water, and uh, the spinner, and you put it like this, and you spin it, it's a very amazing part. <laughs> It's artificial rain, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's extremely good to <laughs> cool heads on a hot day. <laughs> it's a very nice sprinkler. <laughs> it's a great example of a centrifuge, right? Uh, Professor Anil Kakurkar was the chairperson of Ayuka, and he, would, uh, he was very fond of our center. He would come to our, just ramble into our center, and he says the Iranians would be very happy with a centrifuge like that. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first comment. It's a very nice, uh, for children, you know, sprinkle water, water plants with a thing like this. It's a two minute toy. It costs very little money to do this. Um, <clears throat> oh, this is a very nice. It's a balloon pump, and uh, uh, you can inflate a balloon with a pump like that. Oh, the other bottle gone. It's right away. Good. If you keep doing like this, well, in the end, the balloon is going to pop. Very, very powerful pop. We have a slogan on our website. It's a, it's a very provocative statement. The best thing a child can do with a toy is to break it. Right? <laughs> I sincerely believe in this. <laughs> Why do children break toys? Not because they're terrorists, right? <laughs> uh, but because they're, they're true seekers. They want to see what is inside the tummy. What is in the tummy? What is in the tummy? Uh, this is what is driving them to take toys apart. And a good toy design must invite children, pull me apart, son, <laughs> and put me back again. Right? This is what a good toy must do. So the nice thing about this is you can dismantle the entire thing and put it back again. Now, this was done about 20 years back when film cans were very readily accessible. 
Now everyone has a mobile and a, but this is a film roll bottle. The discovery was that film cans go very snugly into a old bicycle tube, right? This is one. So you make a hole over here and you can see that there is a flap. Can you see the flap? If I blow over here, this is green light. Air can pass through. Can I suck in air? This is red light. This is green. This is red. This is go. This is stop. That's what a valve is. A valve is one-way traffic. And we made extremely efficient valve. This is my suction valve. And then over here, in this bottle lid, I have another flap. This is my delivery valve. And then you just put a small pipe for the air to come out, and that's it. So you have a suction valve, a delivery valve, and this is like the bellows in a blacksmith's. And, well, I think Bangalore is the place for startups. If I were to put some little scent over here, I could do a startup. Right? <laughs> it's a very nice product. <laughs> it's a good product, I think. <laughs> very nice breeze. On a hot summer day, it's a nice thing. Well, in God's world, there could be uh, so many, so many. I couldn't bring the, uh, too many pumps. This is from a toothpaste tube. This is Baba Ramdev's, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not for throwing, right? <laughs> He'd be only happy to hear that it's been reused. The tube has been reused. <laughs> so you cut a tube, and that uh, you can you can put the you know the, it's a flexible tube, and you can just push it the other way. We have just put a, put a balloon over here. The other threads, uh, and you put a balloon, chop the balloon. If I blow, will the air pass through or no? With a, you remember the straw? With a roar. Right? Can I suck in air? In God's world, there are many, many valves. <laughs> They're very efficient valves. This is green and this is red. And what we are going to do is, um, it was originally like this, just push the other way. So there's only one single valve and a, and um, Now this is, uh, if I were to just push this in water, water will go in, because the valve will allow it to go in. And the water which is gone in the tummy can't come down. And if I keep doing like this, what would happen? It's a slightly more stroke, lots of water comes out. The children of class one, class two cost no money. You've made a pump. What is a pump anyway, which lifts water from a lower level to a higher level? This is precisely what it's doing. You can dismantle the entire thing, clear all your doubts. It's a very nice pump. This is, um, this is from a book called as the VSO Science Teacher's Handbook. You can access this from my website. Uh, I, I, I have, it's a, with a very heavy heart, I'm trying to tell you that uh, on my website, there are books in all Indian languages. I try to put books in Canada, but there are very few good books in Canada on popular science. About 10 years back, uh, the, the series of books by Isaac Asimov, the greatest science writer, how did we find out about black holes? How did we find out about oil? How did we find out about electricity, about superconductivity, about the speed of light? This greatest science writer has written a series of books 36 books for children. These are 70, 80 pages. History of science by the greatest science writer. We got all 36 into Marathi. And who translated it? Uh, well, one of the greatest writers lives in Pune, uh, uh, Ramchand Guha. He has written a book called as Makers of Modern India, which provides 19 Indians whose thought processes had a great impact in the shaping of our republic. Out of these 19, five happened to be from my city of Pune. You start with Mahatma Phule, the first person to raise the voice of the oppressed classes. You see Tarabai Shinde, the first Dalit feminist. Hamid Dalwai, uh, the Gandhiji's political mentor, Gopal Krishna Gokhale, and the five band Tilak. You not to say about Karve. He's not, because Karve did not leave behind significant writings. So it's not an input, but five of them are this. But Pune has this great culture of uh, all these movements and Emancip social emancipators have left behind a social consciousness within the middle class. One day a lady came and said that, I've heard your interest in books. I'd like to translate science books into Marathi. 
no big names. And I said, take these two Asimovs. She translated all 36. Her name is, uh, and she turned out to be the cabinet secretaries. Her husband was a cabinet secretary in the center, Dr. Madhav Godbole's wife, Sujata Godbole. Crew money exchange. This is the goodness of the people. Because we did this in Marathi, I did this all in Hindi. We saw all on our website. All of them in Tamil and in Telugu, all 30. Not a single one into Karnataka. I appeal to all of you that if you want to make a culture of popular science, there should be good books available in the vernacular. Because not all children, if it's in the vernacular, it's like magic, as our friend said over here. Right? I totally agree with him. So we must get these books into... Uh, this book, what I'm showing you right now is... This is from a book called as a, we did this 15 years back into Hindi. Eklav has printed this. It's a good popular science organization. In, and uh, we did this in Marathi. Uh, this VSO, VA, Voluntary Services Overseas, a big, big British charity. They've sent 40,000 young white men, girls and boys into the third world. Uh, and I think uh, it does a lot of good to these young kids because they're faced with poverty for the first time. They see what poverty is, what deprivation is. So they come back deeply socially sensitized. Some three of them got together and did a book, which was tried out in 20 poor countries. VSO gave us permission to do this into all languages. This is from this. Half, uh, this is A4 size paper, half this paper. That's it. And you make a scale model of the skeleton. I was telling ma'am that we have very few models in biology. <laughs> and this happens to be the only good one. <laughs> very few models in biology. There is a great dearth of models in biology. But a third, fourth child, all you need is an old piece of paper, a scissors, and a little blue stick, and a scale model of the skeleton. And this just goes beyond science. Yet you, then you, you can probe much deeper questions. Tell me, is a skeleton of a man or a woman? We have so many poison in our head. Is a skeleton of a Muslim, a Jain, or a Hindu, or a Christian? Please tell me. So this is very nice to probe much deeper questions in society. It's not just limited to the study. Very nice model to make, right? Well, this is old toothbrushes and art for throwing because uh, you could just, you know, the bristles just lock into each other. You just put a, if you just put a little um, toothpick over there, it becomes extremely nice balancing toy. Very nice balancing toy. It's, so don't throw away old toothbrushes. <laughs> Oh, this is a very nice, I must show you. Uh, this, is, uh, this is just a PVC pipe, um, about 10 inches long, uh, ordinary one. What we just, with, with paper, you can just, uh, you, you know, just uh, for crimp paper into a kind of a cone. You, you may, uh, and put this over here, and you can see this red line over here. So that's exactly the ID of the PVC pipe, and cut it over here. And this is just the right side. So this becomes extremely nice. It's like a rocket. I've got a rocket launcher. And now I'm going to launch it. You can see what angle must I launch it to uh, reach the people at the end. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> we, actually, we actually had Madhavan Nair, who was the chairman of ISRO, visiting our center. And we showed him, sir, we have a rocket launcher. <laughs> And why not? <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> it just goes on like that. <laughs> well, well, this is, uh, uh, this is, you can imagine this, a plastic bottle, and this is just a hoop cut from a plastic bottle. No, no dearth of plastic bottles, hoops. And we just make punch two holes. Uh, these are our, uh, there are two holes I've uh, punched in this. Now I'm going to weave it through one hole, put these two ring magnets here, and weave it through the other hole. It's as simple as that. Look at what it does. All these ring magnets, uh, we, used to, we would buy in Pune. There was a shop in Pune, and uh, uh, he would sell it for three rupees, four rupees, very expensive. And we thought, we thought that he was a kind of, we are, we are smart people, we must integrate backward, go to the first uh, retailer, <laughs> wholesaler who gets it from China, <laughs> right? And we discovered a shop in, in Delhi. He was a wholesaler, supplies, small shop, 
does 15 lakh rupees of business every day? 50 paisa each. That's it. <laughs> they come in boxes of 1,200 magnets. Very amazing toy. Or some of the maximum downloads from a website, Toys from Trash from China. Anyone who's got a mobile or a, you can download, you, you can now log in, Arvind Gupta Toys in China. They, were, they have <laughs> dubbed many of our films in Chinese, and of course they've put a link to our website. So be it. I think kids of the children of the world must enjoy these toys. Someday they'll be made in China and then they'll be sold over here. <laughs> That's another matter. <laughs> a very, very nice toy. Really nice toy. And this is, this is, these are, this was, the original toy was from a sixth class child in this Vidya Pichala municipal school. Now the, they came to our center, they made these levitating pencils and took back, very happy. The next day the kids showed us another toy. The crime, they had no access to magnets. The only crime, <laughs> the poor kids. Now this is a paper cup, you might have coffee in one of these cups out there, take it back with you and make a toy, don't throw it away. And <laughs> the two magnets. So just stick east to north to the south and no, no glue required. These are sixth class children. Capable of not just consuming knowledge, they're creators of knowledge. No reference in literature to a toy like that. <laughs> right? Look at this. We documented this in one of the books, saluting these boys. It is two magnets stuck to this, and you can, you know, different, uh, di different lengths of this, uh, heights of the cup, etc., make a difference. <coughs> well, we make a lot of paper toys. Now, this is one of the simplest paper toys, many of you. Uh, all old magazines, Frontlines, Outlook, India Today, oh, this all imported newsprint. <laughs> we cut them into squares. <laughs> uh, this is the best, cheapest paper available. <laughs> And why, why buy new paper, right? We could recycle things. And so this is, you make a, a fold, a, fold a square, you make a big triangle, fold this again, you make a small triangle. And this is like the letter V, V for van, V for victory. Um, they also look like the ears of an animal. And all you do is to just take both the layers and tear them together. And you make two rounded and slightly long ears. Fold this to the front, fold this to the back. This is Mr. Rabbit in precisely 30 seconds. You can see Mr. Rabbit's mouth, his long ears, front legs. I'm, I'm going to hold it with my left hand. The legs just below the body. I can't hold it here, then I can't move it. Just below the body, grab the tail and move the tail forwards and backwards. And that's a 15 second thing. Now kids have made it, I used to make it as a child, right? Kids have made it for hundreds of years, and all these Barbies and He-Man, Skullman, all these very sexist, violent toys <laughs> are unsustainable, right? The earth is not going to take this shit for too long, right? But these, I think, 100 years down, kids would still be making the toy. If you take another square piece of paper like this, now this is the, uh, this is a documented history. Kids in Japan. Many of you might be knowing how to make this. The flapping bird, the Japanese. For 300 years, kids in Japan have folded. All you need is a scrap piece of paper and your 10 fingers. No glue, no scissors. It has stood its ground for 300 years. You just imagine how many years our children spend in schools without learning anything worthwhile, right? <laughs> uh, which is a million, they hardly learn anything in the schools. What we did was, we took the same thing, and this is uh, my third book, which uh, on the cover is this. <coughs> this is the flapping bird. We cut off the tail, and we just put a, uh, put a helicopter. It's a fan-tailed bird, and you see what this bird does. It's aerodynamic. Uh, HAL has a wind tunnel road over here. I think they could do some properties. <laughs> But <laughs> very nice. Because if the old ballpen refill, never throw away old ballpen refills, are very difficult to get by. Old ballpen refills. Um, <clears throat> when I, you can buy, if you have money, you can go and buy new ballpen refills. They are available. But where do you buy old ballpen refills? I'm invited to many schools. And the first thing I, I do is to 
take a round of the school, circumambulate the school. And if a child's refill is finished, you know, it's going to be chucked like a rocket outside the window. <laughs> it's going to be lying right there. Right? <laughs> so that's how I collect <laughs> my stock of old refills. They're difficult to buy. So there is a little bit of refill over here, a little bit of refill, a pin, and a little piece of paper. And this helicopter is, of course, extremely simple to make. Um, many of you probably know how to make the helicopter, but I'll just show you. Take a little piece of paper like this. These are going to be two blades. We're going to just make two half cuts over here. It's a little variation of this. And the threefold. So there's more weight over here. And we separate this. And this becomes a very nice helicopter. If I were to throw it, it would come like this. Wow. Right. This kids have been. One of the most wonderful toys on Earth, the simplest toy, is, is the flying fish. And newspaper is ideal for it because newspaper is extremely light. You take a little strip of paper and make a half cut. Leave about a centimeter, make a half cut below. Now the, this is gone above. Make another half cut. Now there's a half cut below, half cut on the top, and you can interlock them. And if you interlock them, it gives it the shape of a fish. Now, fish are supposed to swim in water. It's a very, this is a flying fish, a very wonderful fish. And if you chuck this up in the air, come back. Right. Very nice. Very simple things. <coughs> now, this one is uh, these ordinary nails, four inch, five inch nails. If you were to make a door frame, you would require long nails like this. Now, they're not magnetized. They're not. Now, the challenge is, how do you balance a dozen nails on the head of one? There's no, no magnet. It's not a slave of hand. And there's only one way you can do this, and it's a very wonderful way. Every school, it costs no money at all, because nails, the rusted they are, the better they work, these ones. And the three, is to, three to the left, three to the right, equal numbers. The last, I'm just going to lift this up. Now, I'm going to lift this up, and you can see the formation. Right, there's six nails which are wedged between the first and the last nail. And I gently, I can just put this in the center of this, and it's balanced. Very nice balance. <laughs> now, this is, uh, this is not uh, rocket science. Uh, every school must have this, uh, to, uh, that uh, children must be playing. A place, a place, someone said, is a very serious business. Play is much more serious than learning. Most people, most children hate school. They go to school only because the parents push them to school. No self-respecting child otherwise would ever go to school. <laughs> because schools are downright boring. They're downright boring. They, they fail to captivate the imagination, the interest of the child at all. We need to make our schools much more interesting. And we can make them, they need not be expensive schools to make them interesting. That's what the. <coughs> now, this is a very, very, you can just see this. Uh, uh, this is a fruity straw. And I've just made a small cut over here. Ordinary straw like this, ordinary straw like this, seal both the ends. You can flatten them, tape them, cut the top right corner, bottom left corner. So there are two holes, diametrically opposite. Now, there is a hole in the middle. You can't make a hole with scissors like this. What do I use for this? Use a punch. A ticket checker, single punch. Right? File punch has got two holes. You get a ticket checker's punch with a single hole. And this fruity straw just goes ideally, made for each other. Right? And if I blow, we actually costed this in these you know, spiraling go to a mall, buy a toy. The box is often more expensive than the toy inside. And this is modernization, <laughs> right? <laughs> OK. <laughs> At these global rates, 10 paisa. The government of India stopped making coins below 50 paisa. So this is priceless, right? <laughs> <laughs> truly priceless. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no 
don't know why manufacturers are interested in a toy like this, because they can't make money, and they should not be making money on kids, right? <laughs> Let children make their own toys. Every child would love a toy like that. Very small to get into the pocket, so they're all the time they're bored in school, they should be playing. There, there are many toys which, which are tailor-made for school purposes. Now, this is, <clears throat> this is one. This is 100 years old, this toy. Take a pencil with a rubber on one end, probably part of your geometry box. If you do something wrong, you can erase it. So there is a rubber attached with the pencil. It's a two in one. And you make a few notches. Can you see this with a pen knife? A V, a small V, then deepen it. So there are five or six notches. You've got to do it twice or thrice to make it slightly deeper. Then take a card sheet, any greeting card, make a whole big hole in the middle, and put a pin inside the rubber. This black rubber is like a stopper to prevent the fan from flying away. Because the hole is very big. You can see the fan is loose. It can, the pinhead is very small. What do I have in my hand? A refill. And if I just rub this, something amazing happens. Well, this has been. No, 100 years. It says, Fox, every fish is worth his salt. It has been quizzed by it. Six major research. You go to a website, pencil spinner, and you find all the six research papers. You've listed them. And it is non-trivial physics. And you don't need the Hadron Collider for doing this, OK? <laughs> all right. <laughs> Every child can do this. You don't, the NCRT would never give a question, because they don't know. No. <laughs> what is the answer? <laughs> it will never be in the NCRT textbooks. <laughs> they don't know the, what the answer is. But it's such an amazing thing. This, this is a survival toy. If you want to survive school, make this. <laughs> if you get bored in the school, uh, well, I was, if you, you know, get bored writing something very, very boring, and then you can st start playing this. <laughs> right? It's a survival toy. Uh, this is a kind of a version, a similar version. Over here, you just have a propeller, a fan. Over here, you have a disc. And you put seven colors, it becomes a Newton's disc. All right? And it's a good way to spin the Newton's disc. You don't require a motor or a battery, just some kind of vibrations. Right. Now, <clears throat> this I'd like to show you. This is um, you saw the uh, you saw the spinner, the broomstick toy. It, this is a variation. Uh, it, it came from the physics teacher. There's a magazine called The Physics Teacher. And for 25 years running, the physics teacher, it's the American Association for Advancement of Science, they would bring out this magazine. They used to run a, run a column in that magazine called a String and Sticky Tape Experiments. The, the, the actual idea of the motor comes from that. The brushes, I didn't go into it. The brushes, it's a Nobel Prize winning idea. That we, because we went for 20 years, we struggled, and then we discovered this. It comes. This again from the physics teacher. You take an aluminum hanger, right? It's non-magnetic. Aluminum is non-magnetic. And you just pull it out. It becomes a diamond kind of a shape. Here's a five rupee coin, right? Bharat Sarkar ka seal laga iske upar. And the coin is perched. It takes some time. Sometimes I'm nervous that coins fall several times. But you can just make it perch, right? And uh, they will, it's a seat of government. And in a democracy, we should be spinning the, gov the government on our fingertip. That's a good <laughs> democracy, right? <laughs> it's a good democracy. And so a little joker, and then a, a big one. Where is the coin? <laughs> Where is the coin? <laughs> Am I chanting the Gayatri Mantra? <laughs> Am I praying to the Lord above? And now these are principles of science which are independent of my thoughts, right? It's because of the, 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 this, this force of spin. And right now, my finger is horizontal. And very gradually, you can't do that instantly. It takes a time. Now, this is how the sun, how the moon spins around the earth. This is how the earth spins around the sun. Same force. Right? As long as they're spinning, they're there. <laughs> but <laughs> this is a photographic experiment. <laughs> and, uh, and very slowly, once again, I'm going to make it horizontal my finger and bring it to a stop. And you can see that. It works. Wait. <laughs> we 
we make some uh, 60 toys uh, with using the Tetra Pak. The Tetra Pak is a terrific material for making toys. Uh, this is the one, 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 one liter fruit juice box, okay? And uh, <clears throat> there the are two pockets. You can actually see someone actually put a 10 rupee <laughs> note over here. <laughs> and uh, and the, the how to make it is very simple. It's on a sp smaller scale. Take a fruity packet, right? Cut off one flap completely. Hmm? Tuck both these inside. This gives the kind of a depth. Fold them half. And these two middle walls, you can see the whole shape is emerging. Staple the two middle walls and a flap over here. And you can put some Velcro. So that's a very, very nice. My friend Vidla was invited to Italy, and there were so many women selling these. And we promptly we said we must come back and make a film on this. A very nice idea. It's waterproof and, uh, <laughs> and very, very good. I think another startup idea. <laughs> <clears throat> It's a, it's a bit of a dangerous toy, and, <clears throat> but uh, children love it very much. It's this documented Sudarshan's book, The Joy of Making Indian Toys. This is the Rampuri Chaku, right? <laughs> and <laughs> it's a flick knife <laughs> made with two ice cream sticks. And uh, <clears throat> so this is the blade, and it's a lock over here. If I press the blade, hands up, right? <laughs> it's very, the mechanism is extremely intriguing. Kids just love the mechanism. And if you're a pacifist, of course, you can hang uh, notices, Sarkari notices out from this. It's a very nice paperclip, right? <laughs> for pacifist, it's a paperclip for <laughs> this. Uh, my friend Vidula was invited to Malaysia for a talk. And she was looking for some good ideas. And she went to some, some mall or some, and she picked up 1,500 rupees. It was a, quite a fortune for Vidula. <laughs> but Manufacturers go to great extents to complicate toys so that people don't understand. <laughs> this is the principle behind this. In two days, we said there's nothing in this. <laughs> These are bicycle nuts, cycle can nuts, which you can buy in a store by the kilo. GI ka wire gold ka dije ek welding ka tanka. That's it. And you see this toy, amazing toy. The physics behind this is fairly complicated. It's non-trivial physics. It's, uh, why is this happening? Imagine children, uh, the whole class in a circle, and you're passing the Olympic ring. Everyone is at their attention, right? <laughs> and you pass on the ring. <laughs> Very amazing. You can have full force. Man. Great idea for a startup. I think this will sell like hotcakes, right? <laughs> Like to try? Ordinary nuts. <clears throat> this I need some, some help. Can you come? Yeah. Now, now this is, uh, you know, before you make milk bags, they extrude like a tube. Then you cut them, paint them, uh, print them. So uh, you just put a knot on one side. Uh, go back, please. One very simple question, uh, again, this is in biology. What is the lung, my lung capacity? <laughs> now, the standard experiment which I read in my class book when 50 years back was take a bell jar. I never saw a bell jar in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Inverted. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and with the tube you blow. Fairly complex, right? <laughs> the other was you take a bucket of water and you try to spin this, something like that. But uh, this is, uh, I'm just going to take a deep, very deep breath and empty out my lungs into this tube. Please leave it. How much do you guess? Pi r squared h, that's the volume of a cylinder, easy to measure, right? <laughs> Two to three liters, average capacity of a human lung. You have some idea, right? It's a very good experiment. It doesn't hurt children. Now, please, once again, I need your help. Now, this is one part of it. The other part is more dramatic. Uh, last time I was uh, being very fair. Uh, I uh, exited all the air from my mouth into the, no cheating, no air from outside. This time I'm going to take a deep, deep breath again, but keep my mouth 10 inches away from the mouth of the balloon, of, of this tube. Will I get in more air or less air? Well, let's try it. Well, let's try it. 
You hold it, you hold it. I'll, I'll manage everything. You just hold it. <laughs> now, this is, uh, this is a Swiss engineer 300 years back by the name of Bernoulli, right? Many people have never understood Bernoulli. <laughs> Having passed exams, never understood Bernoulli. But this is the best way to understand Bernoulli. Bernoulli said that if air is coming at a high pressure, it creates a low pressure zone. All the air, so I'm blowing at a high pressure, all the air from the sides gets in. You hold it, you hold it. That's what Bernoulli said. Very good. Another one. I need your help again. Hold this thing, go back. And keep holding it tight, I'll do all the other things. Now this is, uh, you can imagine this is sticky tape, black colored, uh, you put it on the floor, the sticky side up. Every two centimeters, put a straw. Another layer of tape on top. So there are 70, 80 straws sandwiched between half an hour's job, right? Now hold it like this. Now if I give it a, can you, have you ever seen a reflected ray? <laughs> right. If I if you hold it tight, you can see. If you hold it loose, can you see a difference like a sloppy man? Right? <laughs> and if you hold it tight, it's like a frisky child running around. So the viscosity of the medium makes a difference to the velocity of, of the speed. Right. You can give it twist. Just hold it. You can see. Uh, what the crest is, what the trough is, what an amplitude is, uh, what the wavelength is, this is the amplitude, this is the wavelength. If you give more twists, the wavelength decreases, the frequency increases. You can see this very visibly. It's a visible. If we do this, wavelength increases, frequency decreases. Right? And, uh, you know, these are these messenger waves. If I just, you can see, I'm able to transmit the message. Right? And this, of course, looks like a DNA helix anyway, right? Something 10 rupees, 15 rupees, every school, we're talking about big things, but these small things need to get. And all of you are massive, all of you owe it to the nation to take them to schools. It's not just this, it is our job, right? You know, make it with your child, make it at home and gift it to the science teacher. This is new Gandhi Giri, right? <laughs> gift it to them. Don't, don't curse anyone. Do something very positive. Gift it to the science teacher. She, he or she might be inspired to do something more, more things. This, thanks. Now this, uh, oh, one of the very nice things I forgot to show you, which is um, usually at the end then. Oh, this, uh, you saw this there. Uh, my, my friend Ashok uh, designed them. Ashok Rupner, we worked, he works in ISER now. And uh, I was in Pune two months back. And this is one of those fidget spinners which you saw. So you just tuck it with aralite on a fidget spinner. And we're going to just spin it. And this is. <laughs> it's like a gyroscope. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Another the third thing which he's given me. Anyway. This is something which I really wanted to show you. Uh, this is not designed by us. They're designed by a couple in Ahmedabad. Um, the, the name is Ashok, Ashok Bhatt and Pragya Bhatt. Pragya happens to be from Pune. She was born in Kothrut. After marriage, she went to Ahmedabad. Dilip works for Isro. When their son Nikunj was born 18 years back, he was born blind, visually challenged. And this is their gift to humanity. Uh, this is, uh, they told me the story. It's a long story, but this is Velcro. <laughs> You know, Velcro has got two strips, one of hooks, the other loops, and they stick together. This is only the hook part, the loop part you discard. So this is my drawing slate with millions of nylon hooks. And this is it's like a, essentially like a fishing line. You can see there is, a, there is a little rubber where I push in a pen, and this is a crank and a pulley. So it's like a fishing line with wool. If I crank the handle, you can see that all the wool gets wrapped up. And wool has a lot of fibers. So, any blind child can draw now. And this is what you do. <laughs> Wool sticks on Velcro is as simple as that. And then a child can just feel it with the fingers. 
and when you just pull this off, uh, the wool gets detached, and if you, if you crank the handle, all the ink goes back into the cartridge, and you can do this a 50, 100 times, right? But this is, India has got 12 million blind children. It's like the population. Population of Australia is half that the number of blind children in our country. That's the extent of blindness, of poverty. We are not able to give them vitamin A, feed them. Now this is come, every single blind school in the country uses this. It's called as a touching slate. Uh, we got a, a teacher in a school in, in Thailand, in Bangkok, a special school, made these slates for all the blind children. And he got such a thumping response. Uh, he wrote to us, uh, we want, I want permission. Uh, I've got some corporate sponsorship to make it for all the blind schools in Thailand. And we promptly gave that. And it's a very, wool sticks on Velcro as simple as that. That's it. Uh, we did something for three things. This is about 30 years back. There was a competition, national competition, by the NAB, National Association for the Blind, based in Mumbai. They said that design teaching aids for preschool blind children. Now, we, I just thought that the rubber slippers was God's gift to, uh, you know, uh, uh, for education, because you could do many things. Rubber is such a workable material. You know, teachers don't know how to cut in wood or work in metal, but rubber cuts like butter. So we, we made some 40 puzzles. Now, this is... Uh, three minutes to cut this right? with a shoemaker's knife. You can't cut a circle with a knife. Just sharpen a pipe, hammer, one pip comes out. It's as simple as that. And a black piece sits into a white piece. You can see, if you cut it out of wood, the sawdust would fall, all the blocks would be loose fit. But in rubber, it doesn't fall. You don't need a backup plate. And a blind child can feed it like this. We made 40 puzzles for blind children just using the Hawaii slipper. Right? We need to apply our minds to our conditions. Ideas can come from anywhere, right? But we must look at our concrete situation and apply these ideas. Okay, nice. A bit of cardboard and make a very, very nice. The, the, the hundreds, we have 15 documented, every day documented a toy in our center. 1,500 toys on our website. And, Just like the rabbit, this is, this is, I was in China, it's, Chinese are extremely clever people, the world is just discovering, very clever people, <laughs> extremely clever people. There was a girl who showed me this, I'd never seen this, it's just a two minute toy, it just simulates the motion, the action of the wings of a butterfly. Very simple, it's not a complicated origami, uh, very, very simple origami. We make a lot of um, things with, uh, uh, with the matchboxes, now this is a, it's a very, just, just a old matchbox and a bit of string. And just like the railway track, you can see the two parallel lines, it resembles the railway track, and you start, goes like, right? It doesn't go back, you gotta, you put it like this, it's like a lizard climbing a wall. <laughs> you can, right? very, very easy to use a matchbox climber. I make many things with the matchbox. Now this is uh, just an ordinary matchbox. You put two paper clips. You can see, tape them. A bit of the paper clip is popping out from both the sides so that you can just weave a thread. That's the whole purpose. Then you put the drawer to make it heavy and keep the drawer back so that it's heaviest. So all the weight is in one side. There are many toys based on this principle of friction and gravity. It's extremely nice. It's like a shimmering butterfly coming down. Shimmering fish coming down. Like this. Uh, the Tetra Pack is, uh, is amazing for making many, many toys. Now, this is a puzzle. It's called as the inside outside cube. I have the cutout somewhere. But uh, basically, if you've seen the Tetra Pack, it's uh, silver outside, uh, inside, and this uh, paint, it's printed outside. And this is the, you can see inside. Every facet is silver, it's aluminum foil. Then you just need to, two, three fiddles, and it's inside, outside cube. It's an extremely nice thing. 
And because there are three layers of plastic, one layer of aluminum, is just the ideal material for flexing it. Right? It's very difficult to find such a good material for flexing. So, very, very amenable. Well, in the end, I'm just going to two more boys. This is, this is really nice. I forgot to show this. Uh, this is a boy who's failed a seventh class. But uh, often we, we, we work with thousands of children. Often the children who get very high marks are very bad with their hands. On the contrary, children who don't score very well are sometimes very good with their hands. And these kinds of activities reinforce their confidence. That you know, something which we can do better than those 90 percent chaps, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so this is uh, we look at this story. <laughs> it's called as a spiral snake. <laughs> 50 paisa to make it. Uh, and this is just take some G you, all this construction work going on. All these big rods they tie with GI wire, huh? galvanized wire. You this by by the kilo. Take two feet of this wind no, round pencil to make a small spring. Pull out the spring to make a spiral. These are pieces of cut straw, colored straw. These are not beads. And that's it. Just go down. Now this is, a, this is something which I clutched for 30 years I had with me in my box. There used to be some toffees called as nutrient toffees made in Chittur. And if you, buy, if you bought 25 of them, this was a freebie. I've never seen this toy being sold. This is a whistle, a bird whistle. No sound. Now we fill this with water. And what an amazing thing. Wonder why no one makes it. <laughs> I think we are bereft of ideas, and <laughs> it's, uh, you know, someone is doing this software, I'll do that software. But there's something more, much more interesting things. The kids would love this. Huh? Uh, so we had someone in Pune make some th three thousand for us, and we distributed it. Very, very nice talk. Well, then I'm, one, one last toy, and this is, this is, uh, this is. Uh, I spent fourteen years in Delhi. Uh, that's the time when Delhi had diesel buses. Now, with a political will and strong opposition from society, uh, there is a political will. The largest CNG fleet in the world is in Delhi today. Right? Despite the pollution, there pollution, many causes. But if you have the political will, you can do it. Convert all diesel buses to CNG buses today. At that time, 20% of the children had asthma in Delhi because of the high particulate matter in the air. And apart from the uh, inhalers and other, other medications, doctors are always saying that these kids must breathe deep. So we, this is a toy. You take a pencil and just poke, a pencil is like a cone. Or poke it like a cone and then just keep rotating it. Not made with the scissors. So the inverse of a cone is generated. It's a very rounded cone. Ordinary sewing thread, cotton thread with a knot. You can probably locate the knot somewhere. This is the knot. And if I hold it, If you give it to a cost 10 paisa to make, if you give it to a child, the only thing the child can do is to blow at it and have great fun. Very, very, and it helps children a lot. We did this. We make lots and lots of uh, <clears throat> uh, newspapers have been, we make about 15 caps using newspapers. Uh, this is uh, a cricket cap, half a newspaper, right? And this is, if you make it in a class, there is a peer pressure. Every child wants it. And no child wants to be left behind. And if you're folding paper, a large paper, is like a geometry laboratory because all the angles and polygons which you talk out in the abstract, they're concretizing, and at the end of the day, they want to make it like to stand up. And yes, and it's, it's a very cool cap. You know, Sachin Tendulkar retired, and he gave me his cap. This is his cap. <laughs> please take it. Take it. Take, keep it with you. Now, this is another one. You stand up, please. And this is like a... Keep it. And this is like the Nehru cap. So we make <laughs> lots and lots of caps like that. <laughs> 15 caps uh, like that. And uh, uh, there's this uh, story in the end. It's uh, called as the captain's hat story. And uh, <clears throat> this was told for 50 years by a lady, Lillian Oppenheimer. She set up the New York Origami Center. And for 50 years, she regaled children with this story. I'll end with this story. It's a tribute to her. 
And uh, uh, there were a dozen books on origami which were dedicated to Lillian Oppenheimer because she made. <laughs> now, this is uh, uh, it's called the Captain's Hat Story. Yeah. The captain's name was Topi Shankar. He was a captain of a sea going ship. And the first few days, of course, passengers enjoy the journey very much. They've traveled on the train, they've flown, but they've never gone onto the sea. But after a couple of days, all they see is a wide blue ocean, not a patch of land, not a tree. They become bored, they become seasick. Now, Topi Shankar was a very clever man, and he invited all the passengers on deck. And he said that I'll provide you with, with good food and drinks, and you sing and dance the whole day. Enjoy yourself. Topi Shankar had a suitcase full of different caps, and he would join the party every day. So the first day, he would wear a huge umbrella cap like this. It's like a huge... Uh, it is appropriate for the captain, protects him from the sun, protects him from the rain, a huge umbrella cap. At night, when the passengers would go to sleep, he would take the same cap, flatten it, and give it one more fold. And next day, he'd be wearing a new cap, and this is like a shikari cap, you know. <laughs> no, this is like a fireman's cap. You see the firemen, they wear a designer cap, they've got to work in very hazardous circumstances, go into a burning house, uh, bring out a light body. So if some rubble falls, it must protect the spinal cord. So there's a little shoot at the back. So this is a fireman's cap. Cap number two. Second night, one more fold, and the third day it would be a new cap. And this is a shikari cap. Explorer's cap, adventurous cap, cap. You remember the first cap is a huge umbrella cap, second is the fireman's cap, third is a shikari cap. And third night, he would give it two more folds. And this is a very, very famous cap. I come from Pune, which has a film institute, which has the film archives, and not too far from Mumbai, which produces a thousand films, uh, Bollywood films, very popular. If you've seen any of our Bollywood films, the policeman, the cop, always wears a cap like this. In Marathi, it's called as a Pandu cap. <laughs> He's been catapulted to glory, international glory, the Pandu cap. So four caps, who, who remembers the first cap? Umbrella cap. Second is the fireman's cap. Third is the shikari. Fourth is the Pandu cap. We must not forget that Topi Shankar, after all, he was a captain of a ship, right? <laughs> so that's a ship. And everyone was enjoying the journey very, very much. And suddenly there's a storm. Uh, there is lightning, there is fierce gale and starts, the heavens start to pour down. And when the sea is on fire, what can a poor ship do? It is rocking and pitching along with the waves, and then a huge wave comes and slaps the aft of the ship, the rare part. Are the passengers happy? They're terrified. We had come for a picnic, and our ship is broken into two. And then another huge wave comes and slaps the front of the ship. Now the ship is broken to pieces, and the ship is sinking. And the, the triangular portion of the ship is called as a bridge. <laughs> the trouble comes you know, wholesome. <laughs> and this uh, triangular portion is called a third huge wave comes and slaps the bridge and knocks it down. It's broken to smithereens. It's broken to smithereens. Topi Shankar is a man who is a man who is a Ek life jacket. <laughs> That's it. Thank you very much for this. I think that was terrific. Do you all agree? Yes. We should have more of such things in Bangalore, definitely. All right. So let's get to questions. Please keep your questions related to the talk. We'll have some more announcements related to making this more public at the end. If you have some questions, there is a mic at that side and one at this side. Put your hand, go there. Please ask it and please keep it crisp. I'm very sure there'll be too many questions and we'll not be able to take everyone. I think I've had, uh, if I, I live in Pune, I've spent most of my life in Pune, uh, my city is my home city. Every day I'm, I'm invited to a school. I open my email, there are three invitations. So when I'm in Pune, I'm in a school every day with 1,500 children. And I think that I live, I live only because of children, because they make me so happy. I recharge myself with children. They've given me such enormous joy, I can tell you. I could be in working, uh, maybe in some U.S. company, I could have been the president, chairman, or some, you know, I would be rotting in MNC, I don't know, or, or retired as a government servant, <laughs> right? I think life has been fun. I've been to 3,000 schools, 3,000 schools. Uh, schools. Some schools pay me enormously, which makes up for other schools who pay me nothing. 
And this is in a segregated society where there's so many poor children, this is how you survive, right? I always said that I have uh, no life insurance, but wife insurance. My wife worked in a college, and, <laughs> and she earned for both of us. So one, one, one suggestion is always marry a wife who's earning. <laughs> <laughs> I really have an appeal to all of you. I find that there is very little popular science material in Canada. We have 1,100 videos. A thousand were dubbed, were dubbed by one individual in Pune, P.K. Nanavati. He worked with Narendra Bolkar for many years. He was born in Belgaum, so Marathi and Canada, both his mother tongues. And I think it's a very august gathering of uh, extremely passionate people. I think you must translate good books in uh, this uh, of our, we, our D Day was 15th of August, but on the 10th of August, we finished translating the 500th book into Hindi. Every single day, translate. <laughs> this is how put it on the web for people. Don't chase publishers, they can go boot. We're not want, want to sell things, but make them available because if it's in Canada, it's like magic to a child in a rural area. So, this is my great appeal to you. In Bangla, Bangla, we have drawn a blank. In Malayalam, also drawn a blank. Tamil, Telugu very vibrant. Marathi is very, very vibrant. Hindi, there is a very large, five, six, uh, large Hindi speaking, 50, imagine 500 million Hindi speaking people, 50 crore Hindi speaking people. So it's half of Europe. That's the size we're talking about. We must generate new material. This is the task, delta task of intellectuals. That's it. So, so on that note, I have, a, I have a question for all our copy speakers and our regular audience. Do you think we should have such talks in Canada? Just put up your hands. How many do you really want? Yeah. Excellent. And if and uh, carrying on in what he said, will you be able to help us to translate material into Canada? Yes. Sir. Or any of the outreach activities, will you be able to volunteer with us? Yes. And put in your efforts. Yes. Come and come and contact us after the talk. So there's a question there. Yeah. Uh, so what was the like a life-changing incident or like you came into this picture and what moment you left the job and you came into the complete industry? No, I think uh, no, it's been Some a very story or something. No, very, very short, very brief. Uh, I've told it elsewhere, but uh, in I, I started, 70 to 75, I spent, did my B.Tech in IIT Kanpur. And there was a central school, Kendri Vidyale, and there was a campus school, uh, uh, where only the children of the faculty could go. There was no school for the children of the mess servants, the, the Imalis, the fourth grade employees. So some of the students and some very nice faculty. And so we started something, a school called as the Opportunity School. So six of us used to bunk classes once a week and just go and teach that. And we did gloriously well. One of them was Ashok Jhundunwala. I had to suffer him for five years. He was my, not just my batch mate, but my lab mate, because both the electrical engineering, Arvind and Ashok. So, uh, we, but they did very nice things later on. But uh, for five years, we taught this. And uh, three, four years back, I was invited to IIT Kanpur, and they took me to the, the campus school has actually got a campus of its own. There were 300 students. So what we did 40 years, I spent the whole day. I said, this is the place I should be, not in the faculty building, but with these kids. So I did that. There's a question there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you, sir. It's, thank you, sir. It's been very inspiring and very humbling at the same time. Uh, the question is that your, your motivation has been to take science uh, to villages, to poor children who cannot afford perhaps more expensive uh, raw material. But I, I, what has happened is a certain, there is a certain school of thought that has evolved um, in which the, the thinking is that if the children are poor, they can do with matchsticks and matchboxes. No, no need for anything more paka for them. W would you, I mean, would you have any comment on that? Or? I, I think this is also the best way of learning science with local materials. Right, if you see something in everyday life and you see science in there, then you feel much more motivated. You see, the stereotype is that children learn science only when they wear a white overcoat, right? Only when they're, uh, you know, dabbing with burists and beakers and test tubes, then they do science. This is a stereotype. I think kids are all born scientists, and if we can show them science in ordinary day material, they're going to be, this is the best way of learning science, because science is all around us. I, mean, I can't be talking to you without science. I can't be walking without science. Science is all around us. And if we can bring it alive and show them science, I think it's magic. It works like magic. Thank you. There's one there. Wait, wait, wait. While they're doing this one. The one with the pencil and the cardboard, how did it work? 
Which that that yes, one? Yeah. Well, it's I, I told you that no one actually knows the answer. We made all conjectures. There's six research papers in this. So a child is the same level as the biggest scientist. You may be a PhD, but a child is you know doing the same thing. No one knows the answers to that. But You, you, can, you can make it, you can make it go the other way around. You can make it go the other way around. Okay, uh, so the hi. question there. Uh, <laughs> hello. Okay, Arvind Gupta, sir. Yes. So I'm from IIT Kanpur, okay, and I didn't know. Yeah. Yes, sir. So I didn't know that the okay, opportunity school was started by you, okay. By the way, it has grown really well, okay. And Dr. S. C. Roma actually was teaching uh, class 8 students, uh, full class, okay, one year physics, okay. And that will come as a MOOC also this year, okay. Uh, so one thing I found, you know, while Maharashtra and uh, you know Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, I feel you know has grown a lot okay, in terms of size. There is a Kastya Foundation, there is Jividya Loka, but I come from Jharkhand, okay, and you know I mugged up V is equal to U plus eighty. I mugged up everything, you know, I, I was a district topper, okay, but all from mugging, okay. Even when I went to IIT, okay, a lot of people were doing robotics, okay, they were doing uh, I don't know, okay, uh, business plan and everything, okay. Uh, I used to go to Sisha Shupan and teach these kids, okay. Mm -hmm. I missed out a lot, okay. And uh, the situation is still the same in Jharkhand, especially. So are there efforts, okay, that are going in uh, tribal areas? Okay. No, I think, see, there are certain states which have uh, historically done well, and there are reasons, historical reasons. I told you about Maharashtra. There is a, there is a great, there have been social movements. Wherever there have been social movements, they have left behind a consciousness. I think places like uh, Jharkhand, my own home state of UP, uh, I see very little change in UP, right? Uh, you know, uh, there are, you know, the chief minister has uh, spent 14 lakh rupees, uh, hired a helicopter to uh, throw flower petals at the uh, pilgrims. Now that is not, uh, you know, it's misplaced priorities. And so I think it's uh, enlightened people from those states uh, who have some roots there, I think they must make efforts. We tried, you know, Jharkhand, you know, Hindi speaking. We tried to make a lot of material available in Hindi. Uh, it's uh, when so. There's a young gentleman oh, here. Sure, sure, sure. Please stand, stand up. up. Stand up. Yeah. Are you here in Bangalore for a long time? Uh, no, no. I, <laughs> I've been in Chennai now. Now, not in even my city. My daughter lives in Chennai now, okay. and she's doing her doctorate in, med in medicine, in neurology at the Madras Medical College. She's a little baby. So I babysit. That's my task. I've been. <laughs> so the baby is one and a half years. I've grown with him. I'm learning Tamil with him, <laughs> and hopefully. <laughs> Next time you come here, you come to schools in Bangalore. Uh, schools. I've been to some schools. I've been to the Valley School. I've been two, three schools have invited me in the past. I've been, but not too many schools in Bangalore. But my website has been there every day. There are. Uh, we have 70 million viewers of our videos. All of them are in Kannada, Hindi, English. And there are passionate books on education, environment, peace, science, maths, children's books. And it shows the hunger in our people for good books, that 12,000 books are downloaded every day. And that gives me the greatest satisfaction. And I all want you to contribute to that, to put things into planet. There's a question in there. Sir, I understand that you're told that money should not be made from children's toy. But I'm planning to work with Asha Niketan, uh, which is a non-profit organization where uh, the mentally disabled children make money by uh, selling products which they make, like Wonderful. candles and wall Very hangings nice. and all. So do I have your consent no, for absolutely. them to make to such toys and sell no, no, them for absolutely. money? Absolutely. I think with this, all this ready-made material for them, and they can earn good money. See, normally, I, I worked with the Spatial Society for eight years in Delhi. I worked with uh, uh, different, differently abled children. And uh, those children, they love they love every child in this past society wanted to wear a cap and make a cap, right? They love doing that. There was a child, a child who could only uh, use one hand. So we just tied the balloon with a rubber band. So with one hand, he would press the tube and the balloon would inflate and you see his eyes lit up. So we need to you know, translate these to adapt them to their conditions. But these are absolutely low cost materials and if they can earn a living, I'd be the happiest person. <laughs> the lady over there. Good evening, sir. Uh, thank you for the valuable input which you've given. Uh, a simple question, what is the procedure to invite you to our school? Oh, well, I, so some days I'll, maybe a year from now, I'll be traveling, you know, but then my daughter finishes. Next July, she finishes the course, and we said, now we're going, we, we're going to be traveling. 
And my sister is in Bangalore. I otherwise I'll come quite often to Bangalore. So next time, write to me. And after next July, I would certainly like to come whenever I'm in Bangalore. We would be waiting, sir. I draw all my energies from children, not so much from adults, but from children. And <laughs> this is what is, uh, they are my life force. So, so behind the camera, this is Yes. Uh, so, uh, is uh, is same of your uh, alma mater a guy uh, named Manu Prakash maybe you uh, maybe oh well, well uh, has a, he he has made a, a one dollar yeah, microscope yes. but it is not easily available in India so can you make an alternative of it uh, uh, well I uh, I saw Manu Prakash's TED talk yes. and I I wrote to Manu Prakash congratulating him because he's done a very nice job if you can see malaria cells with a you know paper paper microscope. Uh, but then you can, you can identify the disease, isolate it much easier. It can help in uh, you know, curing a lot of people. It yes. has a lot of potentialities. Then he also made that. You've seen that spinner? Yes. Uh, where, where we separate the plasma and the, right? Yeah. But these things are easy, not easily available in Indian market for uh, kids to buy. So. No, but we need, to, we need to work. He's willing to share the technology. He's a very fine. As a matter of fact, when I read him a letter of uh, congratulations, I did not expect, uh, I did not even know that he was from IIT Kanpur. He promptly wrote back, sir, you were my first inspiration. He wrote me a very nice letter. I feel very nice about my <laughs> a, a, a request, keep your questions crisp. There are too many people and I'm already losing track of who. So, good evening, sir. Okay, yes. first, please go ahead. Yeah. So, good evening, sir. Uh, thanks for a very nice talk. So, I have a question here. Uh, normally, uh, as we ex uh, explained, rural kids are good at making the toys and uh, doing their own things. But what I have observed is they fail in terms of articulating the same science concepts. And uh, the education system in India is such that they have to write the exams to articulate what they understand. But most of the kids fail in that. So what is your suggestion? How a rural school can improve in that aspect? How can they make a kid to uh, uh, write or articulate a particular science concept? So the same, what you're saying is also true. There is a segregation within the city also. In our center, we would get uh, children from the uh, Marathi medium, municipal schools, a lot of people. We open our hearts and our doors to municipal school children because we thought they needed us the most. Yeah. Every week, there would be a busload of kids coming from Bombay. They wanted to come to Pune because there is no such facility in Mumbai, all of Mumbai. Okay. No such hands-on facility. And we would feel very bad about it. These are rich children who can afford it. And we are depriving our own municipal children of, of this. But even the municipal children who come to, they were very good with their hands, yes. not very good at articulation. These, the elite school children are much better at words, at articulating things. I think it's a very general problem. But to get them interest, once they get the science concept right, I think the conceptual clarity would also lead to articulation. And this is, these help them get deep interested into the subject. If your child has made a motor, right? You know, right. no matter how many articulations, I mean, when I, you know, the IIT Kanpur 20 years back gave me the Distinguished Alumnus Award. So the electrical engineering department, my home department, they wanted to honor me. So I said, look, five years you taught me all this shit and I never made the motor. <laughs> <laughs> I discovered the beauty of the motor much afterwards. I told them very humbly this, <laughs> which is the truth. <laughs> so not that the IIT education is great, right? right? There needs to be great reforms at all levels. Uh, you know, today the government thinks that if you put a cell phone in the hands of a child, you have taught him everything. Uh, whereas it's heartening to know that you, was, you, know, you managed to produce so much. Do you think really the child is able to still appreciate things in three dimension and touch it and feel it rather than just get something of a cell phone? No, absolutely. I think if you read uh, Montessori, you read Piaget, you know, anyone, you know, they, you know first is... Uh, the, the, our sensory perception. Yes, but that's the child's natural instinct. Is the yes. government allowing it to grow by putting in its hand a cell phone? Um, I think cell phone also can be given once in a while to a child. I think you can't keep it taboo. Today it's so much part of life. You can't keep the cell phone totally taboo. But if you, ch you know, children stop watching. I would tell you one example. In our center for 11 years, twice a week, kids would get the lunch box because they would spend four hours with us. No child ever ate their lunch. Because if something innately interesting is going on, children will go to the toilet towards the end, right? When they just couldn't hold it, right? <laughs> so this is the children's natural instinct to gravitate towards something interesting, something is happening, right? Then the television, this virtual reality is a poor substitute, I think. 
Okay, so there's a gentleman at the back, if you have a mic. Yes. No, okay, so there's a young, young fellow here. Go ahead. How did you get the idea to apply science to toys? Well, <laughs> well one thing I, th I think that uh, I'm myself a tinkerer. I, I, uh, I taught in a school, a small school. My daughter used to go in Delhi. It's called as Mirambika, run by the Arbindu Ashram. So I taught there for six years. And taught means I ran the science club for the school. And I said, I told them, look, I have, I'm not a teacher. I'm not trained. I'm not a B.A. or anything. I love making and playing with toys. Six months and I'm not here to teach you anything. Six months he kept playing, hmm, rubbishing my toys. And the best test is to give to children. You know where they will break, what are the weak points. <laughs> it's real testing in real time. After six months, one child came to me. Uh, Bhaiya, you teach me how to fold the flapping bird. I said, let's start now. Right? So it's like that. I taught children. I, I work with children or when children have, I, I forgot to give you examples, several examples where children, we, we have made some toy and children have made it much better. Right? <laughs> so they always, uh, you keep alive because you work with children and they come up with, they, they are honest in their feedback, unlike adults who have a mask, and they tell you this is bad, it doesn't work. And you know immediate feedback. So uh, working with children is a live laboratory. Uh, to keep yourself alive and engaged, you need to work with children. So in the interest of time, we'll restrict to three last questions. I'm very sorry. We'll, we'll, so there's one gentleman there, a lady there, and you, uh, and here. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you for your speech. Amazing. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm a student and I was part of a coaching class and I used to reach really late home. And I had like one hour of free time and I had ended up using my phone and right, getting disgusted by science that they taught us. How do we bring back that curiosity and that beauty of science that we can clearly see that so many people are enthralled by that beauty, but in coaching center, they're like a... Uh, in so coach, coaching center, they make mincemeat out of your brains, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, you may have a very successful quota model, but what creativity have come out from these kids, right? So I think if you, you know, there is a... See, but I must say, children are very afraid and what are they afraid most of of their parents very high expectations of them and their surrounding relatives and friends and they are very high expectations they have of a child and that is very bad most parents have mugged up their own lives and now they are out to buck up their kids lives <laughs> i personally feel that my, my wife has been a counselor all her life if you see a problem child you can trace it back to a problem parent immediately <laughs> right so there's nothing wrong with our kids right there's such high aspirations. You may not go to IIT. What's so great about the IIT? Become a nice, good human being, right? Have good values, be compassionate, and learn, learn to earn a living. That's it. That's what life is all about. Be a good human being. That's more important than going to the IIT. So the lady there. Namaste, sir. Uh, thanks for your time, uh, valuable time, and uh, your uh, uh, experiments. I want to know, uh, is there origami on maths models? Um, could be it, it is there on your website, or is there a book so that a kid can okay, I must go through? Uh, uh, this, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is my friend. He wrote the, probably the first book in the country, Origami in Maths. Uh, Shastri. Mr. V.S.S. Shastri, Asian <laughs> Polar. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, so thanks for uh, enriching experience, you know. Uh, you are really the role model. Uh, just one question out of curiosity, like, uh, was there any particular reason to move to the Pune? Like, why didn't you work in the Uttar Pradesh? Oh, well, there's very, very strong reasons. My wife happens to be from Pune. <laughs> very, I, would not get, I would not get wife insurance if I didn't go to Pune. <laughs> no, I must tell you that I, I spent 17 years of my life. My brothers are still there in Bareilly, UP, my hometown. But uh, Pune, when I went to Pune, and I just, just opened my eyes to the amount of work which had been done. It just, I would not be doing what I, the, I, one book is due is what Pune contributed to my life, right? It enriched me immensely, the kind of people you met. Just amazing place. It's not for nothing that Ramchand Gua, he's a very dear personal friend that, you know, out of these 19, five happened to be from Pune, and today, I'll give one example. There was an Orkut group. Orkut was extinct now. It's like the dodos now. But it used to be very vibrant. So someone held that group in my name. 
I am not on Facebook, not on, I can't keep up with my emails, uh, forget about social media. <laughs> so they said, we want to meet you, sir. I said, come to the center and I'll, toys I'm not, I talk about books, I'm passionate about books. So three hours, I said that we need to get some good books into Marathi. Six of them translated six books, working in MNCs, IT, banks, etc., etc., six books into Marathi and sent them. So this is the beauty of the place, right? We need to, we need to give them a challenge. People need to earn their living with the MNC, with the IT, anywhere people need to, this is basic. Kabir ne kaha tha, bhooke pet to bhajan bhi nahi hota. To pet bhaa zaroori hai. Par pet bharne ke baad kuch achcha kaam karo. Kuch nek kaam karo. So I just thought that that's the time to back you up. We should do that in back up. All right, so let's stop there in the rest of time. Please join us for coffee, not set. Just a one more announcement. The next coffee with curiosity is on 9th of September. It will be delivered by Professor Tati Jain from uh, India Statistical Institute of Delhi. If you have something about infinity and finite, as a poster, just go on. Thank you.